we already knew that changes were on the rise when the Chicago Bears lost to the New England Patriots. And their first overall pick at quarterback, the guy who was supposed to be a generational talent, has gone an entire month without throwing a single touchdown pass. And we knew that somebody was going to have to get fired with how ugly of a loss the Bears took to the Patriots. You lost 19-3 to to a team whose defense has not been that good. And offensively, they just been average at best. And yet, Caleb Williams was sacked nine times in their 19-3 loss against New England. He's been sacked seven times when they played the Houston Texans on Sunday night, and he got sacked six times a few weeks ago against the Arizona Cardinals. The Bears now are 31st in sacks allowed, allowing three and a half sacks per game, only ahead of the Cleveland Browns, who are allowing nearly five sacks per game. And Shane Waldron... We knew that he was going to end up being the first casualty of the Chicago Bears dysfunction because somebody has to go because you know Matt Eberflus has to try to do everything he can to delay the inevitable, which is him losing his job. But here's what the kicker is. We know that Matt Eberflus at this point, he's a dead man walking in Chicago. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. This thing is going to spiral so left to the point Ryan Poles has no other options but to cut ties with Matt Eberflus. And I kind of ask myself, did the Chicago Bears make a mistake trading away Justin Fields? Because this offense was better when Justin Fields was the starting quarterback as compared to what it is now with Kayla Williams. At least you were better running the football with Justin Fields. Kayla Williams, he's a good athlete, but he's nowhere near the athlete that Justin Fields is. And at the same time, you got to hold Kayla Williams more responsible if you're a Bears fan for how he has played. Yes, The situation that you're in, how good your coaching staff is, does have a big impact on how good your rookie quarterback performs. But what we also have to understand is that when you get drafted first overall, you're supposed to overcome situations like this to a certain extent. Yeah, you can't overcome everything, bad offensive line play, bad coaching, but It's not like Kayla Williams is in a completely terrible situation like how Bryce Young has been with the Carolina Panthers for the last two years. At least Kayla Williams has a really good group of wide receivers. He has some weapons on offense, a lot of weapons as a matter of fact, and he's just not that accurate. He looks like the same player in the pros as he was at USC. He hasn't made any development. And we thought that we saw Kayla Williams make somewhat of a turning point with how well he played against the Jaguars in London and the Chicago Bears went on a little bit of a run. But now that this team is actually going up against teams that are somewhat decently coached and you're not beating up on the most pathetic team in the league right now, that being the Jags, you're getting exposed. And Andrew Luck, When he was drafted first overall by the Colts nearly a decade ago, he carried that squad. He carried Chuck Pagano as the head coach. He only had T.Y. Hilton being his best receiver, not really that much of a run game, and the offensive line always sucked, but yet he was able to overcome it and elevate the Colts. How does Caleb Williams elevate the Bears? This is the same person who got outplayed by another rookie quarterback from his same draft class in Drake May, who most of us perceive to be in an even worse situation than what Kayla Williams is with the New England Patriots. He doesn't have a DJ Moore or a Keenan Allen on that team. His best receiver has been Kayshawn Boutte and tight end Hunter Henry. And yet Kayla Williams got outplayed by Drake May despite having a better situation of the two. Yes, there is a lot of blame that goes on the Bears organization As we all know, they're notoriously known for destroying young quarterbacks from Mitch Trubisky to Justin Fields to now with Caleb Williams. You know what they say, history repeats itself. But Caleb Williams was supposed to be a lot better 
than what he's been this year. He can't even hit the layups. He doesn't take the easy throws. He doesn't take the checkdowns. And he also isn't really that aggressive. It, I look at Caleb Williams and I'm like, bro, you kind of look a little bit worse now than what you looked at USC and I was on the Caleb Williams hype train. Trading away Justin Fields basically was the Chicago Bears repeating the same cycle that they've been doing for the last couple of years with these quarterbacks. They were better off giving Justin Fields another year, probably hiring a better coordinator than Shane Waldron because I keep seeing these quotes from Bears players. I get asked about Shane Waldron and what went wrong. Keenan Allen just put out something saying he was too much of a nice guy. And the Bears did an extensive search, by the way, for their next offensive coordinator. They interviewed like eight guys for this position. And Shane Waldron was the dude who impressed them the most when this was the same guy who didn't really do that much to help maximize Russell Wilson's career near the tail end of his tenure with the Seattle Seahawks because they couldn't run the football, they couldn't protect Russ, so it's no surprise that the offensive coordinator that couldn't give Russell Wilson a little bit more help that relied on Russell Wilson to play a lot of hero ball that has success is the reasoning for a little bit of Caleb Williams' disappointing rookie season. Now, Matt Eberflus, as a head coach, he does a really good job with the defense. But offensively, they just look lost out there. And at this point, you, you know he's nothing more but a dead man walking down there in the Windy City. Because when you're a defensive-minded coach and your offense can't figure it out, your team is going to struggle because you don't have enough knowledge on that side of the football to be able to fix some of the big issues. All Matt Eberflus can do is, you know, move some guys around on the offensive line, cut some guys, trade some guys, but nothing really is going to change. At this point of the season, who you are is what you are, and what the Chicago Bears are are a poorly coached team on offense with a rookie quarterback that just looks distraught out there. He looks like a chicken with his head cut off. At, at some point, the Bears are going to continue to lose, and you're going to have to start saying, okay, you know what, enough of this. Let's just go ahead and cut bait with the main problem, which is Matt Eberflus. He's a good guy. He has tried his best. He he got Nick Saban in there during the offseason on hard knocks to give him advice about how to help Caleb Williams develop, but yet none of that is working. And Matt Eberflus may just be one of those coaches that's a good coordinator. He's just not cut out to be a head coach because he's not good at managing a team. I feel like when him and Ryan Poles made the concerted decision to drive Caleb Williams and move on from Justin Fields, it was because Matt Eberflus felt if he had this generational quarterback, it could save his job. He could ask Caleb Williams to be Superman. but no matter how good or how generational of a quarterback prospect you are, you still have to be coached. You still have to be developed. It's like Matt Eberflus thought Caleb Williams was going to develop himself. The Chicago Bears are 13th in the league in passing attempts per game with the worst offensive line arguably in the league. That's unacceptable. You're 30th in yards per game. You're 24th in scoring. And you're second to last in third down conversion percentage. You're 23rd in rushing yards per game. You're 28th in yards per rush. Kayla Williams needs to play better. But no matter who they end up turning to as their new OC, nothing's going to change because this is just what the Bears are. The only way they can turn this thing around is if they just go old school, 1985 Chicago Bears, rely on their defense, and they just run the air out of the football with DeAndre Swift and whoever they got behind them at running back. Because you can't ask Caleb Williams to keep winning games for you by throwing it 30 plus that's not winning football. The only way you're going to win with Caleb Williams is asking him to throw the football probably 20 to 25 times a game. Because with how bad your offensive line is, you can't do anything but run a lot of bubble screens and quick outs to get the ball out of his hands fast. And eventually defenses are going to catch on to that. You might as well just go ahead, run the football a lot, try to take the ball out of Caleb Williams' hands as much as possible to try to help him out 
and help regain some of his confidence. But when you are just a franchise that just struggles to develop quarterbacks, you keep repeating the same cycle. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over again and get the same results. And that's why the Chicago Bears right now, their season is going left. 